Hi, this is Ms. Wright, and this PowerPoint is to help you review what we learned in Odysseus the Complete Adventures. Okay, so this is where we are. We are in the Mediterranean. This is Ithaca, a tiny island off the western coast of the Greek mainland, and the Greeks sailed from, um, or Odysseus sailed from Ithaca, and eventually ends up in Troy, where he fights in the Trojan War for 10 years. And these lines show he's very circuitous, meaning roundabout, indirect um, journey trying to get back home. All right, so the terms that I'm going to cover, these are just a few of them. Uh, you should uh, feel familiar with them by now. So we have anthropomorphism, epithet, honor, trickster, metamorphosis, zania, and arte. I like this image because it gives a pretty realistic um, depiction of the long boats that the Greeks sailed in. They were long and low and um, the oars that each man had to sit. There were one or two men on each side of the boat pulling these oars. Alright, so we're going to start with anthropomorphism and um, the dictionary defines it as the gods acting like humans in attribution of a human characteristic or behavior to non-human things, i.e. or e.g. deities in mythology. So deities are the gods. And it's basically saying when the gods act like humans, when they are acting like humans, um, another dictionary includes when they take human form, they are um, showing anthropomorphism. So here are some examples from Odysseus the Complete Adventures. When um, Athena arrived in Ithaca, she disguised herself as an old friend of Odysseus from across the sea. Athena disguised herself as mentor, an old friend of Odysseus' family, and met Telemachus by the waves. Athena, still in disguise as mentor, met him at the ship. So on page 30, page 32, page 34, you see that Odysseus has taken human form. She's actually taken the form of a man. Um, someone who um, Odysseus knew before he left to go to war and uh, she is interacting with the uh, humans, namely Telemachus, in the guise of a human being. Betrayal is another concept that's important. Um, betrayal was um, seen as something very very evil and something without honor and the one exception here is the first one with Penelope it says for three years she Penelope fooled us with this de device but we discovered her and made her finish well she's kind of responding to the bad behavior of the suitors so she is acting very much like her husband as a trickster she's come up with this trick of weaving a loom by day and taking it out by night to keep the suitors at bay so she doesn't have to decide which one of them she's going to marry so her betrayal of them or her going against her word here is in defense of her honor. She doesn't want to have to marry any of these because she doesn't believe um, her husband is dead. They plan to ambush and kill Telemachus before he could return home. That's the suitors who are supposed to be loyal to Telemachus. They want to marry his mother, but at the same time, they are plotting the death of her son. She, Athena, had learned of the suitor's evil plot to murder Telemachus. So that's another reference to the betrayal of the suitors. Epithet is a descriptive word or phrase added to or substituted for the name of somebody or something, hi highlighting a feature or quality. And there are several epithets that were introduced to in Odysseus the Complete Adventures couple are goddess of the gray eyes that's Athena so even though her name isn't there um, 
it's associated with her and sometimes her name in the full edition of the book is there and sometimes it's just the phrase but it's still considered an epithet Zeus Lord of the Thunderbolt Zeus gather of clouds Godlike Odysseus, great-hearted Odysseus. All of these are descriptive phrases that help us to have a insight into the character. Gods intervene in the lives of men, and the Greeks believed that God wasn't um, far off um, observing mankind, but that the gods would leave Mount Olympus and actually. Um, interact with them and often that the gods would come as very low-born people like beggars and if you as a Greek did not live up to the Greek ideal meaning you were cruel to the beggar you didn't show Xenia um, and somehow offended the gods then you would be subject to one of their terrible punishments which you probably learned about last year so Achilles grimly armed himself in the most remarkable armor of the world the world had ever seen. It had been made for him during the night by the god Hephaestus. So the god here is making something especially for Achilles. When the fleet set sail for home, Zeus raised a howling storm which scattered the ships across the eastern Mediterranean. So you see that because the Greeks offended Zeus, he intervenes and he makes sure that he punishes them by sending this horrible storm which scatters their ships and makes it either impossible or very difficult for them to get home. Uh, in this passage uh, Zeus is dispatching Hermes to the island of Calypso which is called Ogygia and he is supposed to tell Calypso it's time to let Odysseus go home. It's not his fate or destiny to die on her island. And I will make my way to Ithaca, said Athena, and give advice and confidence to Odysseus' son, Telemachus, who is now grown to be a splendid young man. His troubles are great, and he will welcome my assistance. So that's showing again how how closely she is associating herself with the family of Odysseus and we can understand why she would be so close to them she's the goddess of wisdom and Odysseus is the thinking man's hero the intellectual hero um, and that's why they have such a close association and also I have and as they set sail she advised him how to avoid the ambush and return safely home. So she is his mentor. She is his protector. This is just a picture of the Council of the Gods. Um, and the gods would leave Mount Olympus and introduce themselves into what the human beings were doing. Honor was another important concept. Zeus had been persuaded to do this by Thetis, Achilles' mother, who felt that her son's honor had been compromised and that Agamemnon and the Greeks should be punished for the insults to Achilles. So in those days, your honor was everything. And if a man felt that he had disgraced himself, that he had lost his honor, he often would not want to live. So when the different kings swear the oath to protect Menelaus and to defend Helen's husband um, for them to break that would for them to lose their honor and to be looked down upon in society and they would rather be dead than to do that most of them except for Odysseus and um, lack of honor which I put some examples of that in here shows that a person was not living up to the Greek ideal. So his desire for revenge still not satisfied Achilles that should be then acted very ignobly. He tied Hector's dead body to the back of his chariot and dragged it around the um, walls of the city. So please excuse this should be then. Um, and this is an example of lack of honor because when Achilles um, is not awarded the armor um, when Ajax is not awarded the armor of Achilles he goes temporarily insane and he starts slaughtering animals but 
most of all, he calls them by the names of his comrades, meaning that he wishes his comrades were dead. He wishes he could murder them. And when he comes back to his right mind, he is so ashamed of his behavior that he um, commits suicide, which is to show how serious it was to lose um, your honor in the face of your comrades. Before all other men, he has done honor to us who hold the Olympians' heights. This is referring to Odysseus. And so Odysseus was honored among the gods. They actually had a lot of respect for him. Even though he was not perfect, they did have a lot of respect for him. Okay, I'm going to skip that. Arte, Arte in its basic sense means excellence of any kind. The term also um, means moral virtue in its earliest appearance um, in the Greek. So anybody can have arte. You can be a woman and have arte. If you're particularly virtuous, you can be lowborn. You can, um, you know, be a beggar, which we'll see later on. You can be a farmer, a servant, and have arte. It's it's living up to your full potential. It's living up to your path in life. You don't have to be a king. You don't have to be someone highborn to have arte. You just need to be the best person that you can be at whatever sphere in life you um, inhabit. The Trojan forces were led by Hector Prime's oldest son and a warrior, second only to Achilles in strength and skill. So both of these men have Arte because they're both the best, the best Greek and the best Trojan. So as when it comes to being um, warriors, they have Arte. The best carpenter in the Greek camp was the man named Epius. So even though Epius is not a very brave person, he has a certain amount of arte because he is the best carpenter in their presence. Intelligence of Odysseus. The goddess Athena loves him above all others and he is by far the cleverest of the Greeks. So um, as I said before, there's a reason why Odysseus and Athena have such a close connection, and that is because of his intelligence. He is a man that uses his mind, not just his brawn, not just his muscles. So um, he and Athena would have a lot in common. He's also a warrior, and the um, goddess of wisdom always was associated with war because you need to use strategy in war. He's also a trickster character. So when he comes up with a plan for the Trojan horse, that is a trick that they're going to play on the Trojans. And so that shows he's a trickster. Penelope herself is a trickster when she fooled the suitors for three years, keeping them at bay. So being a trickster was... Um, a sign of intelligence because it meant that even though you were outmatched by size or um, strength, you were able to use your wits, your intelligence, your cunning to get out of difficult situations. This is kind of a replica of the Trojan horse, although um, I think it's just for publicity because it would be obvious that somebody would be inside this particular horse. Metamorphosis is a transformation caused by supposed supernatural powers. So very, at the very beginning of the book, we know that Autolycus has the power to change the color and shape of animals. Um, Athena has the power to change herself into a bird and fly away. So when um, a person or a god has the ability to change shape, um, into something completely different that is metamorphosis. Okay, I think I'm going to stop here and continue on part two of this video because I'm running out of time. Please remember to subscribe. You can use this information to help you with the handout that was given on the themes and motifs from pages 9 through 34 of the reading packet for Odysseus the Complete Adventures.
Okay, have a great day, and I will see you soon. Shout out to all my super, super students.